Welcome to Inside the Firm, a podcast dedicated to small business owners and hosted by entrepreneurs, Alex Gore and Lance Psycho. Each week, they take you on their journey of how to start, run, and grow a business by bringing you inside their architecture and real estate development firm. Get a behind the scene tour of how these business leaders manage their clients and foster company culture while creating new and innovative projects. And now your host, Alex Gore and Lance Psycho. Welcome to another episode of Inside the Firm. I'm here with Lance. One try, get it done. <laughs> Psycho. One take. One they take. Call, they call them all one take. Good old one take. Frankly. That, there'll be a callback in the future to that right there. <laughs> okay. I, I'm uh, Alex. I draw things. I don't say things. Yeah, gore. he doesn't memorize lines. No. Gore. I do look at them and then claim that I don't. Yeah. But we have a great show for you today. Uh, we're going to talk... A cool 3D printer that you might not even heard heard about for a house, which is awesome. Talk a little bit about the future through what the money supply is doing. We have an F9 commercial. Are we going to show them? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, I was hoping with the Fed, you're going to talk about like good things are coming. Yes? We'll see. Okay. We'll I'm see. Not gonna try. We'll see. But before that, let's pay the bills. If you are interested in learning Revit, go to RevitRocketShip.com, where yours truly teaches you how to model like it gets built so that you have a true model that you can count on because more responsibility equals more reward. RevitRocketShip.com. Accurate data is crucial today, especially in today's business environment. Outdated and inaccurate data leads to turnarounds, delays, and rising costs. With supply chain and staffing issues, these costs and delays can multiply. That's why a resource like ArtCat.com is so important. ArtCat works with manufacturers to keep their data up to date and accurate and offers it to you easily, accessible, and free. Use ArtCat's powerful search engine to find what you need and download it right there on their site without needing to pay anything or even register. So try ArtCat.com today. That's A-R-C-A-T dot com. I'll go back to, back to you, back to me. Back to me, we've got... I found this... Uh, LinkedIn has been pretty pretty awesome lately for content. So on my screen here, if you're watching, I've got, and I'll turn it up too. Yep. Um, we've had people on the show who 3D print houses with concrete. I've grilled them. Sometimes they weren't pleasant with their responses. I've talked to other professionals. Al Gore and I have pontificated a lot about it a lot. And I think this was the first 3D printed house or building that Al and I both saw in the process and went, I think they're solving the problems, finally. Yep. Yeah, so we're going to take a look, and then maybe Al can pontificate. Yeah. I've seen those. That's crazy. crazy. But it's not concrete. It's wood this time. What? Like yeah. Like wood glue? Yep. It's all the sawdust left over from the factory. Okay, why do you like that one better? Okay, Al pontificating Gore. We have Baca, who's <laughs> here in the podcast. Say hello to Baca, everybody. Hi, everybody. <laughs> there he goes. Um, so concrete, uh, I love concrete. I actually think it's great. Uh, it's just once it's there, it's so hard to work with. It's not always the prettiest. It's hard to work with, thank you. It's hard to work with. Yep. It solves kind of like this multiple layers thing. Now, this one is wood. And I love that because the inside is now more beautiful. You still have to waterproof the outside. Any manipulations can be done simply. Um, it's something that people are very, very, very familiar with. It's something electrical and HVAC can easily chop up in the most horrible ways that they do. Um, and then you might have to you know, fix something. But since this is 3D printed, you're probably printing in uh, routes, right? Yep. You're probably printing, or you can even if routes for plumbing and stuff, right? Plumbing, yeah. electrical lines, yep, yep. So that you can just fish it through, you know. Like, think about think about your outlets. Like, oh, the, the, where the hole is, right there. Yeah, yeah. I liked it because you could. You seem like you could then m manipulate this more easily with just regular common hand tools, and, and patch things in. Yeah, because it's you know the problem with this, we like to think we're going to no matter how much planning we do ahead of time. No matter how much redlining of the plans, and then no matter how much construction planning we do, 
I, you just cannot avoid a change order, it seems like, or some kind of ch- some kind of thing that happens, or even just an owner that comes in and like they see the space for the first time in reality and not just virtual reality, and then they go, "Can we move that?" And then you go, "Yeah." St- so then you're stuck with this supposed 3D building that's uh, a 3D printed building, a lot of concrete. It's like how do how do I change this? Can't. Construction is hard enough, and here's one of the hardest things about construction is knowing the ramifications of the changes that you do. So construction shop talk 101, Lance will probably agree with this probably fully. We're laying down the foundations for this basement and we have to fill in this one part of the window, about six inches of the window in order to fill it in. So I was out there, I'm like, it would be so much easier if we just move this foundation wall six inches over. Why not? Six inches bigger. We're not even increasing into... Uh, the the side setback and I go well you know what I know the plans but let me look up let me look on the next floor above and see what's going on well it turns out okay. turns out that the kitchen lines up perfectly in that corner with an existing wall so I go oh we can't move that yeah. while I'm here since I now know that that exterior wall is supposed to line up with an existing interior wall mm-hmm. I better go inside the house and start doing all my measurements and all my tapes and doing all my math and adding those up and seeing if that's going to outlo- go from the outside foundation all the way over. It was an eighth of an inch difference between the measurements and what we had in the model. And I kept it in the model because I was pulling tape and there was like things in. Um, <laughs> I was pulling tape through multiple different things. And it multiple different times, it's like, well, do I go this way of the 16th or that way? Oh, the 16th? oh, oh. And then so, they add up. Yep. Okay. So I was like. Yeah, I get it. We're within eighth inch. This is this is good. This is good. Port where it's supposed to be. Um, what I'm saying though is, let's say I had to move it an eighth inch or something like that. Going back, like, or if something happens, mm-hmm. like all, all the time, and you have to cut something in, like doing that in concrete is such an issue. And to full circle back to what Lance is saying. And I've done this and we've done this in TIs too, is like sometimes you don't realize stuff until you're out in the space and all the framing's up and yeah. you're like, Oh, well, okay. I know. This has to happen. I know. Because it's just there. It's just it, no matter what, I'm telling you, as somebody who builds too, like, yeah, it's true. I mean, we just I'm just continually blown away. I'm like, how did how do we miss that? Oh, I guess we're not perfect, that's why. Shoot. And it's yeah. not even big misses, it's just oh, now we gotta solve that problem that I guess we couldn't see in the three D model for some reason. Till you get out, till you literally get out with that different perspective, yeah. Yep. But either way, uh, good job, University of Maine. Thank you for trying to do something else besides concrete, and it's even better because you guys are using waste. Yep. Like somebody's gonna figure this out. I'm somebody's gonna figure this out, and these guys maybe are trending a little bit more kosher in the direction I want them to go. I like so, it too. Yeah. Okay. All, all right. right we got. Moving on. Um, Lance, open up the first link. Everyone has seen me talk about this link, which is uh, the Fed balance sheet. Yeah. And it's going down because they are essentially not buying uh, as many treasuries. Uh-huh. And treasuries are government printing paper saying IOU. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's literally like, remember when uh, one of those, uh, d- those, those dorks uh, went to Aspen uh, and Spent all the money and said, I got a bunch of IOUs. Jim Carrey. Uh, oh, Dumb and Dumber. Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> so the government has very, very fancy IOUs. They right? do. So the, this is what hopefully should be tamping down the inflation. Go to the next one, Lance. Next one. I didn't know this one existed until a couple weeks ago. Really? This is the Fed money supply. So it came yeah. back down, but now it's scooting back up. And that could come from a couple different places. One is the government is still printing IOUs, a.k.a. treasuries, and it's just the Fed isn't buying as much, but other countries, wealthy people are. If you have any sort of diverse portfolio, uh, you buy these, banks buy these. So the government is still buying a lot of money. Uh, Also, the way banks loan out and stuff like that could be increasing it as well. Uh, I still think that a quarter point drop is going to happen and a couple other points drops are going to happen and they might, you might be dealing with points going down, but of inflation staying up and high. 
for a while because no one can get off this drug that's called this drug, the sugar drug. Yeah. That's called government print money. Yeah. Fiat currency. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so what, um, <clears throat> basically there is some good news coming markets. Uh, I've got Forbes pulled up here two days ago. Markets firmly expect the FUD, the fed to cut interest rates on September 18th. So that's a very, it's a key issue to look up, uh, to be ready for, and uh, I'm hoping it is actually a half a point. And uh, one of my, one of these, one of the folks that I've uh, talked to a lot, who's done some financing with us and worked with us in all, all different ways, very smart man. He uh, he said, uh, I asked him like, what do you think, half point, quarter point, three quarters? And he goes, uh, he goes, I will, I would put 99 percent of confidence on a half point. Wow, because the uh, in it, it just historically. This is the first rate cut has consistently always been a- after a bunch of raises. Mm-hmm. Historically, it has been a half a point. So uh, I'm hoping it just, you know, go, speaks to what me and Al were saying about, uh, man, we just need a psychological boost here. We just need a little bit. Yep. Not a lot. Speaking of that, we have a, we got a boost for you. Do we? <laughs> yeah. Do we? Well, l- before we show everybody this, so Al, I want to just uh, the 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 title of this episode. The title of this episode is "How to Film a Commercial for Your Company," and I kind of wanted to just unpack that a little bit. Sure. So l- let's say let's say you want to do what me and Al are about to show you, which is we we have been working for two weeks now, two or three yeah, two or three weeks on a commercial that is going to replace. Let me show you this one, everybody. It's going to replace this one on our website, which is outdated. Because now Al has this amazing beard. I have much more gray hair and a beard as well. Yeah. And we've just... We're older than 12. We just evolved like as professionals. Like We're not just architects now. We're literally builders and developers. And then we do all th- if we do all three, and like there's a whole different kind of pitch. We have... We have uh, nine principles that we wanted we wanted to express and just we have a bigger staff we have our own building we have two locations so it was like ah it's time for a big upgrade for this <clears throat> so i think between the first time we did this commercial which is again you can go take a look if you want to to the second time now we we've learned a lot um just about thinking about how we would even put together the commercial and i think uh so my, I have some couple tips for people. Is you should do a storyboard exercise, and you should you should do it. You should do it over maybe t- a course of a couple weeks. Maybe touch it once a week. Um, if you have a business partner like like I do, like Al does, that then I would put together like I, I would do a Google document or something that's shared that you guys could talk about and manipulate. Um, the first meeting might be you guys just sitting down like me and Al have been doing now at our at our weekly meeting we have just just me and him he and i of like we'll pull out a phone and we'll just record it and then we translate and then we then we then we do a voice to text thing um we get there's some software you can use or we'll just put on loom if we're in the office and loom will spit out a transcript for us yep super helpful then we then we've been feeding it into like chat gpt and having it like consolidate and bullet point us um that's been like just kind of revolutionary i think because then me and al are just like it doesn't. I don't feel like it's a big burden or slog when we're doing this work. It just kind of flows. Uh, then you need to identify someone that you're going to have do the filming, right? And the first time we had, we did it, we worked with an independent uh, photographer who was able to record, you know, the video and everything on her phone, and on her phone, but like on her uh, camera. But she was definitely like more, ex- she was, her expertise was in still images, and the second time around, after me filming myself too on the on the on the fishing channel all the time and doing this show, um, doing more public speaking, but then getting involved with uh, one of my, one of my friends, Bill, 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 we identified as like, oh, this guy, this is what he does all day. This is this is his this is his mo. He's even worked in Hollywood, and he's figured and he knows how to do prompts. So the biggest difference between the two videos was the first time was like, we just, we had to get something out there. We did it. It served its purpose very well. It got us clients. But and, this- and you should do that. You should, even if you have to dip your toe into it, you should let people see you, hear you, see your space and just get it out there. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, and then the second time, it was much more polished, right? Because we have this, we have a videographer who's, he hates when I say that, but like a uh, cinematographer, whatever, like a little producer, like an independent guy. And after we had our outline done, me and Al, our storyboard of how we wanted this commercial to come out, we, we, we talked, we, we thought about different scenes, like where how we'd walk down. You'll see it here in a second. Um, big points we wanted to get across. And then we sent it over to Bill for his feedback. And then we went back and forth maybe two or three more times after that. There was a day where me and Al just went and practiced our lines and then revised it again. Um, and then we spent one day filming total. Yep. And then there was some supplemental filming I had to do like two hours earlier this week with Bill just to get some B-roll. The reason we did the supplemental filming is after we did the whole day of shooting at like three different locations, uh, would have been F9 HQ in Longmont, a commer- uh, construction job site, and then Denver HQ. Bill put together a draft for us. Me and Al had our meeting, and we watched the private draft and then recorded it on Loom in real time and gave him feedback. It was like so consolidated. I was going to say, the, the, I think Lance is laying out a, a great picture. It was a very condensed process. Yeah. Because like the initial spitballing was us at lunch talking in there, then you feeding it through there. And then us looking at it another time, like in a week, literally for a half hour, and then another time for a half hour, and then we filmed it for a whole day, and then the supplemental, you know, uh, stuff of, of editing. So it, it was very quick, though, but still, that's that's the process. Yep. Uh, so give Bill that feedback. Then we did some additional filming. He tweaked those things. And then we had one last bit comment. One of comment. comment. One comment at the end, comment, which yeah. was the out, to, out two comments. With the, for the, one was for the video itself, s- small little tweak, and then uh, the outtakes part of it. So that's uh, that's the overall process. I think you should do it too, like I was saying. Like even if you're doing something that's like a fifteen to thirty second consolidated like reel or something like Instagram would do, get, getting your name, getting your getting your voice, your person out there on your website. Or whatever social media you're using, if you're is your business as an architect, like you're still in the minority of people willing to even do this. Yep. Most architects are just not thinking in this kind of way. So here without further ado, here's finally I'm gonna show you the F9 commercial. Hi, my name is Alex Gore, and I'm one of the co-owners of the architecture firm F9 Productions. And my name is Lance Psycho, Alex's business partner and the other co-owner of F9 Productions. F9 Productions is Colorado's top-rated architecture firm because we focus on the fundamentals of customer service, design, and delivery. Our nine guiding principles allow our friendly and knowledgeable staff to provide the best customer service possible. Most firms try to be too fancy. That's why our number one principle is to be brilliant at the basics. If we get the fundamentals right, everything else falls in place. Our number two principle is to model it like it gets built. Our third principle is training is a force multiplier. We pride ourselves in giving you the right advice. Our fourth principle is to communicate. Our staff is trained to respond within one hour if possible, and if not, 24 hours. Our fifth principle is to not only serve you the client, but to serve the contractor and the city. Our sixth principle is to take extreme ownership. That means if there's any problems with your project, We run right at the solution. Our seventh principle is to help build the world. Our eighth principle is deliver value to be valuable. That means no extra details that you don't need. Our ninth principle is have fun. So we hope you have fun too. Our architectural services are unique because we're also builders. This hands-on experience allows us to deliver in the design room. And this is where we transfer our building knowledge to our architects and where we show what we can design and build for you. As architects and builders, we can give you the white glove service. And don't just take our word for it, check out our Google reviews. Here's what one of our customers had to say. I've used half a dozen various architecture firms over the past 10 years. F9 is among the top I've ever used. They are professional, timely, creative, and had a good understanding and knowledge around value engineering. I'd use them again. And even though we offer white glove services, we're not afraid to get in the field and get our hands dirty. We don't just talk the talk, we walk the walk. Here you can see our clients' dreams becoming reality. Over the years, we've built everything 
from tiny homes to custom residential to even commercial developments. We ensure that we're honest and trustworthy builders by operating on an open book methodology. That way you can see where every penny is spent. We're always your architects first. We never rob Peter to pay Paul. Our construction experience is a tool that helps us build what others can't. In addition to designing and building what others can't, we're also conveniently located in downtown Denver. That way we can serve the entire Denver metro region, southern Colorado, and even the mountains. Our Denver office allows our staff to be experts in the often onerous and complicated Denver building and zoning codes. That makes your life easier. We've won the best of mile high two years in a row. That's why we'd be a great fit for your next architectural project. If you like what you've seen and heard so far, then come visit us at our Denver or our Longmont location. If you come to our Longmont location, you can actually touch, feel, and see a project that we designed, built, and developed for ourselves. You can also book a Zoom meeting or a phone call by going to our website, f9productions.com. If you need design, visit F9. And my name is Lance Psycho, Alex's business partner and the co other co-owner. Ah! That was gonna be the good that take. Was gonna that was gonna that be was the good it. take of F9 Productions. See, wrap, done. Build the world. Build the world. Oh, okay. I'm in a movie. In a world. Yes, you're in a, in a yes, world. In a world where in you build world. the world. <laughs> the world. We're building the world. Where we build the world. Our seventh principle is to help. I can't. You can. <laughs> you can. Build the world. <laughs> that is so cheesy. I love you it. wrote it. One more, one more. It's all right, I'm an actor. It's all good. <laughs> Six times a charm. Yeah, let's go for nine. F9 is a charm. That's why we'd be a great fit for your next architecture project. Okay, don't read the paper. I'm not. Just know the lines, Al, jeez. Yeah. Hey, we're not movie stars, though. Yeah, we're architects. We draw things, we don't say things. <laughs> the best of my... <laughs> now, I'm, now I'm doing Lance. I was gonna make fun of him until I crushed it. I, I will lie for you, Al. Thank you. You did it in one <laughs> take, it was me taking this whole Thank time. you. Okay? I'd use them again. Okay, only 10 more takes and then we can go do something else. Hey, we're going down. Cool. All right, gents, I'm going to go sure back out. Sure the shirts, boys. Yeah, and I will uh, see y'all in back in the cockpit in a minute. Bye. <laughs> All right, so that was it. I hope you enjoyed. I think one of the keys, too, was, and this is the feedback that I got. Oh, perfect, perfect was uh the bloopers the uh, the cuts, outtakes yeah the outtakes and all that because they're like oh it makes you really personable because we are in the video we are hitting point telling who we are um some people love the great transition into the house you know uh where we walk out of the house and then it just like okay let's just be personable obviously we are not filmers uh or, or actors or anything like yeah. that so we had to do it multiple times um so that's it hope you enjoyed uh, if you uh, like this, please leave a comment, positive review, and tell a friend. Go by, and we'll see you next week.